Moi moi! Annyeonghaseyo! Hello guys! This is Korean girl in German law school, a first semester law school student in University of Hamburg, Germany. So today I want to talk about German law school system. I've thought about a lot of things that I want to talk about, but I guess the first informative video that I can show you is how the semester system in German law school work, which is quite different from Korea or the US. So, I guess the first two videos that I posted was about like a short brief introduction about how I got to study in German law school and the other one was a vlog kind of thing that I posted about my law school library. So today it's gonna be my first informative video about how the German law school semester works. So it's gonna be a lot of things so I kind of wrote down here so I'll just you know peek into it so that I don't forget about anything okay. So. Good. As far as I know, firstly, I would like to talk about the system of Korean law school and American law school. So, um, these two are actually basically similar because Korea follows the, um, Korea follows the American law school system. So, um, to get into Korean or American law school, you first have to graduate bachelors. So, I guess the major doesn't really matter. Either you study, I don't know, English literature or political science, social science. You can still get into um, Korean and American law school as long as you pass the LSAT or LEAT. So, the LEAT is the Korean, uh, it's a Korean version of LSAT. So, basically, it's called Legal Education Eligibility Test, LEAT in Korean, and Law School Admission Test. LSAT in Korean, uh, in, in America, sorry. Mm -hmm. So after graduation of bachelor's, you need to take LEAT or LSAT. Then with the GPA and the motivation letter, you get into a Korean or American law school. And afterwards, I heard that it's a three-year course program. And after you graduate, you take either the bar exam or a Korean lawyer exam and become a lawyer. Simple, right? But German law school is a little bit different. And while I searched for it for the first time, I was quite interested, you know, it was very, very different. So this is how German law school work. First of all, German law school is not exactly a, ba um, a master program. It's not exactly a special law school program, just like Korean law school or American law school. It actually starts from a bachelor course. So. How it works is that German students would usually take something called Abitur, which is like a college entrance exam. And after Abitur, with their scores, they would apply to a German law school as a bachelor student. So like the first semester freshman student. So they would start their journey as a lawyer right away. And I guess this is the biggest difference between Korean and American law school, isn't it? And after they get in, the first semester to third semester is actually called something called Grundstudium. So if you translate that, it's basically a basic studies or like a fundamental studies, I would say. So from first semester to third semester, what you learn is the basics of law, which is civil law, public law, and criminal law. And you need to actually pass it within five semesters. So this is also interesting, right? So I guess um, Korean American law school maybe, and usually as far as I saw from my friends, they just um, pass usually, and then they just go through the whole three year program without a pause. But it's a little bit different in Germany. The first semester to third semester, which I said it was the Grundstudium, the university actually allows you to pass within five semester. What does that mean? It actually means that a lot of students fail. Yes, I have failed once. No, actually tw two exams as well this first semester already. So this is very common actually. Um, since law is so hard to study, a lot of students fail in their exams or even their semesters. And there is a chance that they need to um, retake the exam or do the whole semester all over again. So this is why they actually give you a chance to pass it within five semesters, which I, th I think is really good. And the problem is, but after five semesters, if you still fail, then you have to, I think, start the whole law school again. Or a, a lot of students actually, because of this reason, change their major as well. Next is Hauptstudium which can be translated as main studies. 
So here, I think it's a little bit more um, deepening of what you learned in first to third semester. So basically, we, we will learn again about civil law, public law, and criminal law, but it's a little bit more deepened and it's a little bit more concrete. And I heard that within the five semesters of Guru Studium and Half Studium in together, you need to actually do an internship, which is called Praktikum in German. In University of Hamburg, you have to do a three month of internship within that period. So I heard that one month has to be in Hamburg and the other two months or maybe individual months, you can either do it in other cities or even in another country as well. So I think they make you do the mandatory one month in Hamburg because um, the laws are different by state to state and you know, you really need to know about Hamburg law if you're studying and maybe even working afterwards in Hamburg, right? So I think this is why they make you do the mandatory one semester in Hamburg. Oh, and other thing I forgot is that this um, internship, you have to do it in um, summer breaks or like winter breaks, but actually German universities don't really have a, a vacation. So um, what it means, I'll tell you later about in some other videos, okay? German universities don't actually really have a vacation. Good. Um, now we come to Schwerpunktbereich Studium, right? It sounds really long, right? Schwerpunktbereich Studium. It sounds hard, but it just means focus area studies, and which I think um, it may be just better translated as your specialty, right? So um, before taking the law exam, you have eight and nine semester, which is a year, to prepare for your first state exam or first lawyer exam. So during this period, there's no classes, you just learn by yourself. But of course I heard if you want to rewind or um, review what you learned, you can go to the previous um, classes that you've taken and retake the classes for yourself as well. So if you reach the ninth semester, it means you have completed your journey in your university to take your first state exam, which in German is called the erste Stadt exam. But of course, like I said, um, not everybody and most, most of them don't really finish in ninth semester because as I said, um, from first to third semester, you can finish in five semester. And even the one that I explained before, the Hauptstudium and Schwerpunktbereich Studium, this can be even longer depending on how you want to schedule your exam, studies or exams. So actually, I, I saw a lot of people and I heard a lot of people take their um, first state exam in their 10th semester or 11th semester, 12th semester and on and on. So it sounds quite scary, but I personally think it's not so bad because you can, you know, plan things very flexibly and you actually have some chances to study by yourself. So I think it's pretty good kind. But of course, some people would ask, isn't it bad when it's too long? Yeah, of course, right? You would want to finish it fast normally. So they actually give you an incentive when you finish everything in nine semesters. So usually for the first state exam, you would only have two chances to pass. But I heard if you pass everything in nine semesters, then you would have one more chance to take the Stadt exam, which means that you would have three chances in total to take the first state exam, which is, you know, pretty good for you, right? Because, you know, you might fail as well. So, yeah, but hopefully I don't fail, right? Mm -hmm. But I guess this is kind of similar in Korea as well, because in Korea I heard um, you can only have five chances and you have to finish that five chances within five years as well. So I guess, you know, most of the countries would have some limit about when to pass your state exams or lawyer exams. So yeah, oh, this has been already a very long video, but yeah, what happens after the first lawyer exam, you know? To, in Germany, it's interesting because in Korea or America, usually you just become a lawyer after the bar exam or the lawyer exam, but this is not how it works in Germany. To fully become a lawyer in Germany, you should also do a two year of training program, which is called Referendariat in German. Oh, that was bad. Sorry, you know, some, some things are not so smooth with me in German as well. So yeah. Um, and then after the two years of um, training, you would get to have the Zweite Stadt exam, which is the second state exam. 
So there's basically two big state exams you have to pass before being a German lawyer. So yeah, this is the process of being a full German lawyer. But I guess then some of you might ask, then what happens after the first state exam, right? You know, still you maybe if you pass one thing, it may be still good, right? Yeah, so there is, I heard, something called a diploma jurist. Ah, sorry, before that. Um, so when you um, so when you perf when you pass the second start exam, then finally you became a full jurist. If you translate that, it means you're a full lawyer, I guess, or full legal um, person. But yeah, if you pass only the first start exam, then you become a diploma jurist. So you actually get a German law school degree after the first day exam, which is equivalent or similar to a master's degree. So with this degree, actually you can work in sectors that are unregulated, but also need some legal advices. So you're not exactly a lawyer, but you can still work in certain legal sectors. Yeah, so today we talked about how the German law school system works and how to become a lawyer in Germany. It's such a long, long road. But yeah, I hope I can make it and how I hope someone watching this video thinking about being a German lawyer would also make it as well. If you have any questions or if you want to talk about your law school in your countries, please leave a comment below. I think everybody would find this very, very interesting as well. Yeah, so if you like this video, if you find it informative, interesting, if you want to look at more videos of mine, please like the like button and subscribe as well. Then I see you guys in the next video. Bye bye!